this is the Provoke Prawn, and here I want to talk to you about some mistakes to avoid with your all-in-one cooler setup. And this will apply to any cooler, but I'm using the Corsair H170i Elite Capelix here for demonstration purposes. This is an all-in-one cooler and a 420mm one. But the point here is all about the installation of the pump head, the thermal paste, and what to watch out for in terms of getting things wrong that then might lead to bad performance in your system and what to do to check to make sure everything's running smoothly. So you can see that this cooler has thermal paste pre-applied to the pump head on the copper plate and this is pretty standard across most all-in-one coolers that you can purchase from most brands. Sometimes you'll find thermal paste included in the box you have to apply yourself but most of the cases uh, will have this thermal paste applied in this instance. You'll see there's a protective cap in place here to stop that from being damaged during the installation process or during transit and so it'll ensure that it has good coverage. Now during my setup and testing recording footage in order to show how to install this cooler in various different ways, I managed to cause some issues with it. And I want to talk about them because I think it might highlight a problem that you could have. Now you won't necessarily be doing this, but what you might find is that while you're setting things up, you cause a bit of damage to the thermal paste. You see, for example, now this clip from a bit later on shows that some of my thermal paste is now missing from the cold plate because it's stuck to the plastic cover. Obviously not ideal. This area could then mean that there's no thermal paste coverage on that part of the CPU, which then could lead to a hot spot, which is obviously not ideal and would lead to throttling and other potential problems. Now, this cooler will work with multiple sockets as well. So it comes as standard with Intel brackets pre-installed into it, but you can also install AM5 ones, as you can see me doing here. The problem with this is if you do that and then try and use the plastic cap that comes with it to protect that thermal paste, it won't work because it now won't fit. So if you're doing this sort of setup and pre-installation process for building an AM5, I'd recommend doing something simple like this where you're basically cutting off the corners of that plastic housing. So it'll then make it so you can put it back on. This means that you can then carry about your build process building in your case, installing fans and other things, and not have to worry about the thermal paste getting damaged. Now, if you find that your performance isn't that great, one thing you can do is obviously you can clean up the thermal paste, remove it from your CPU and from your cooler, and then reapply some other thermal paste in order to sort out the problem. But I actually recommend this as an avenue to explore if you're finding that your cooler isn't running at top performance, your CPU is running a little bit hot, there can be a number of different reasons for it. People have asked in the past, and I've got a lot of experience with a lot of different coolers, and I can tell you that some of the most common easy mistakes to make are simply accidentally damaging the thermal paste, as I've just done, or not seating the cooler down properly, not installing the thumb screws properly. So here you can see me removing, cleaning up the CPU and the pump head, and then putting on some thermal grizzly thermal paste and then installing a CPU cooler on top. Now it's really important here that you make sure you seat it down properly. Use the right hardware for it, so the right standoffs and brackets because that can make a big difference too. And then to install those thumb screws and make sure they're tight in each of the corners. You've got to be careful not to over tighten obviously, but sometimes if you find that your temps are too high, it can literally be as simple as these are just not quite tight enough one or two loose thumb screws could result in hot temperatures. Now, I've done a video separately on what you should do after you've built your PC to make sure everything's running smoothly. You can see, obviously, I've got the Corsair cooler installed here and running with a number of fans on it in the NZXT H9 case. But then the next step is to make sure it's running as it should. So I recommend using Cinebench R23 because it's a free download that you can use. Use that with hardware info or hardware monitor and maybe IQ in this instance, for example, to then run some tests and check that your CPU is performing well. And if you find that it's running really hot, like in the high 90s, then this could be an indicator that there is a problem, whether it's thermal paste is damaged, whether it's poor thermal paste, or whether you've just simply not screwed down the thumb screws tight enough. This could be an indicator of that. Now, sometimes, Admittedly, it could just be that there's some overclocking beer pride from your motherboard that's causing it, but it's worth testing these things and checking them out, maybe replacing the standard thermal paste with fancier stuff. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped. 
You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.